a superhero. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Well, pardon my French. Fuck those fuckers. Hello one and all, and welcome back to my channel. Now, you know that at a point people have been talking about having superhero fatigue. You know, after having all these big superhero movies for the from the Avengers Endgame to the Batman vs Superman to the Wonder Woman, Justice League, Iron Man, Captain America, Wonder Vision, there has been so many superhero movies. But sometimes one TV show or one movie comes out in that genre that just redefines what it means to watch a superhero movie or television show. Because of the whole CW Arrowverse thing, right, I kind of felt like I've seen it all before. But it was like Eric Kripke was trying to tell me that, no, 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 you have not seen this. Basically, the boys follow these seven, that's what they are called, the seven superheroes. They are the front line of what it means to be soups. And, that's, and they are headed by Homelander. And then there's Queen Maeve, who's like a Wonder Woman type. And then there's A-Train, who's like the Flash. Then there's Black Noir, who is like, I don't know. Honestly, in the first season of the show, the first 10 minutes of the show, we saw a human being disintegrate right in front of our eyes. The superheroes are managed by this company called Vought. And Vought basically is a PR marketing pharmaceutical firm that fronts or that is behind the soups. When Hugh Campbell finds out that the superheroes aren't who they say they are, he meets Billy Butcher, who is very hot, but very maniacal. And they kill one of the seven, and that is the beginning of the hijinks. That's the beginning of the questions that we ask ourselves about our fascination with superheroes. Because think about it, when you watch something like Captain America or Iron Man or we see Superman, we are very fascinated by the fact that, wow, these people have abilities that we do not have. But it also brings to mind, what can they get away with since they have abilities that the normal human being doesn't have? And those kind of questions are what makes me love the boys the most. Because apart from the fact that nobody is a hero in the story, Everybody has done some messed up thing in the story and that makes it nice because you don't root out for anyone else, right? Because on one hand, you want to root for the boys, which is Billy Butcher, M.M., Frenchie, and Huey. But they've done really messed up things. And of course, you can say that it's for the greater good. But like, is it though? And then on the other hand, we have the superheroes headed by Homelander, who is the most crazy superhero ever but then there's a sort of loveliness to his craziness because he really gives me the creeps but at the same time i'm very fascinated by how insane he is when the first season ended i thought they cannot possibly top that but then the second season they decided to go all out and if there ever was a show that said that it would blow your mind this show took it literal because almost every episode body parts are flying all around and it's so interesting the plot of the show doesn't follow point to point as the graphic novels but certain key things are similar so if you've read the graphic novels you're actually going to enjoy the boys and if you haven't read the graphic novels not to worry the boys is enjoyable as is one of the major things that draws me to the boys is that it doesn't just take a broad aspect to superheroes right it doesn't just say that oh superheroes are bad but it just points out to the fact that sometimes when you have certain abilities it blinds you to humanity it blinds you to what it means to be like just the ordinary person walking down the streets just you know doing whatever and also 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 point out like how social media how the internet actually kind of influences our fascination with superheroes because think about it if there was a superman like figure now we'd be fascinated 24 7 we'd be following the person on instagram on snapchat on twitter on facebook just to see what they're up to and the thing is that there are a lot of parallels between the boys and the superheroes that we grew up or have grown up being attached to because if you think about a Captain America sort of figure, Superman sort of figure, you figure this person who is strong, who is empathetic, this person that likes people, this person that is always willing to lend a helping hand. But then you meet the alternative in the boys and you realize that, no, 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 I do not want to be caught anywhere near this Homelander person because he will literally kill me. I don't blink an eye about it. And another parallel it brings out that is quite, quite interesting is how companies mess up and hide it. 
Vought is in charge of superheroes, yet Vought also wants to do very despicable things. But because they have money and because they can get away with so many things, they do get away with so many things. And we see that all around. A lot of multinational companies, a lot of companies do very messed up things in our countries, in this world. But because they have money, we sort of give them the pass, even though like we call them into question, like, why are you doing this? But some way, somehow, we still end up giving them a pass. So they, they end up not paying for it. And I think that's one of the major things that the boys calls into question, that even when people who are in charge mess up, do they really pay for what they do? Ordinarily, if I'm watching a show and there's human bits exploding, I'll be, ugh. But at night, I watch it with so much happiness. Like I see someone's head explode, I'll be like, oh my God, this is television gold. And this is the one thing about the boys I like, they're not the superheroes we want, but they're the ones we need. And also one of my favorite characters in the boys has to be the deep because he is the most vain, misogynistic person in this entire world. But at the same time, there's a sort of like naivete about his character and i don't know if it's because of the brilliance of chase crawford because look chase crawford is very good but anytime the deep comes on the screen you want to slap him and then at the same time you want to hug him because you're like oh poor baby you don't know what is going on french is also my favorite character because he has this very nurturing spirit about him even though he is a drug dealer basically so those are my two favorite characters not Bill Butcher because, I mean, he's obviously going to be a lot of people's favorite character. Not Homelander because he's a psychopath. Queen Maeve, not really. I, I mean, they haven't given her a lot to deal with. And I feel like she's going to die anyways. You know, every time when I talk about movies or TV shows, I'm like, man, whoever I think will die doesn't die. And I don't like it. But this show delivers on people die. And I appreciate that so much because it's like they saw into my heart and realized that there needs to be chaos and mayhem and they delivered. What's more can you want from a TV show? And I also appreciate the fact that The Boys also has like an after show special when you can watch the cast and the executive producer answer questions about the show. Like they basically just talk about the behind the scenes, they talk about the inspiration behind it. And I love it so much because it adds more conversation to the show. Anyways, my name is Ifa Labi, as I have said already. Let me know your favorite part about the boys. Let me know what you like about the boys. Let me know what you don't like about the boys. Let me know, just let me know your general comments about it and I'll see you on my next video.